smells the high hill. On this week's Bondi Vare Top 5. Ugh. It smells like fish, but you think it smells like cheese. Uh, there's something very dangerous and very nasty down there. At number five today. Sit down. Good boy. At the Bondi Referral Hospital Sash, Jeanette and Paul are desperate to get help for their Cocker Spaniel Dusty. Dusty's had an ear infection for about three years. He's been treated all that time. It just seems to be getting worse. And now he's got some horrible growth in there. So we're just trying to work out what can be done about that. Hi, Jeanette. Hi. Yeah, Andrew. Hi. Hi. How are you? How are you? Paul. Paul. Hey, and who's Dusty. this? Hey, Dusty. Dusty. Hey, Dusty. Hi. How you going? Oh, you do stink a bit. Yes, you do stink. Oh, come on in. Oh, man. He's walked into the, to the consult room and the consult room just smells really bad. I'm afraid that's coming from Dusty's ear. Been okay. infected for about three years, but now he's got this horrible growth in there as well, which has yeah, okay. grown probably in about six months. And Even after three years of daily cleaning and medication, nothing has fixed Dusty's chronic ear infection. Ooh. Ooh. Not good, is it? Mm -mm. Has he got an ear canal? Yeah, it's pretty hard to see these days. I'm looking at Dusty's ear and he's got this festering, for want of a better word, horrible ulcerated um, ear canal. I can't see down into an ear canal at all. It's totally obstructed by this, this mass. So it's, look, it's obviously horribly infected and we've got this big novelty growth there that might just be part of the infection, or I guess it could be something a bit more nasty than that. Oh, I'll make you like that. Um, and it smells to high hell. You've been treating his ear for three years on and yeah, off? Pretty or much, pretty much on? Well, pretty much more on than off, yeah. really. Paul and Jeanette have done an amazing job with Dusty. They've been really dedicated. They've just done everything they can to try and get his ear to be fixed. But you know, I really think that unless we do something now, you know, they'll have to seriously consider putting him to sleep because he's in a lot of pain. Think about your own worst um, earache and multiply it by about 50. Yeah. Um, and he's had it for three years. Yeah. What he's been going through is, um, is, is not sustainable. Yeah. Um, touch wood, he's in good hands and we move on. Jeanette and Paul have spent the last three years trying to fix the courageous pup's ear. Oh, mate, you're very brave, aren't you? Yeah, he's pretty good. You can almost not get in there to clean. Oh, I think you'd be um, doing amazingly well. Well, if I haven't you have stuck been. anything down there. I kind of put the syringe down there and it gets yeah. part way in. Mm, but... okay. There's no amount of medicines and antibiotics or whatever. No, we can spend another 18 tried months then. doing that. We've tried that. Yeah. And... yeah, and uh, to be honest, it's cost us a fortune. You know, it's been, you know, it's $1,000 a month on medication. <laughs> it's like it's mad. The situation is now so desperate that the only solution is an extreme operation. But I think the only way we're going to fix that is to remove it entirely, and that means he loses his ear canal. Yep. So he won't have an opening there at all. Okay. Okay. And that sounds really radical, and I'm sure Paul and Jeanette have gone, gosh, you know, what? Unfortunately, there's nothing else we can do. Yeah, it's a pretty drastic step, but. Um... Yeah, I mean, this has been going on for so long. I think that we're happy to look at what the next stage might be, especially if he's, especially if he's going to be so much better. The radical surgery is set for tomorrow. Come on, Dust. Come on, mate. It's the only chance Andrew can give Dusty for a life without constant ear pain. We'll see you soon. All right, Dust, you good boy. You're OK. If we don't do this, he's just going to get worse and worse and be in pain forever. Hey Dusty. Hey stinky dog. How's that here? Oh. Alright, you good boy, get you asleep. Andrew's anaesthetizing the eight-year-old to assess how he's going to clear the ear in surgery. This is the first chance I've had to have a good look at Dusty's ear with him asleep. There was no way I was going to have a look beforehand. And it's just, it's a mess. I mean, there's no other way of describing it. It's, oh, it's just, it's bad news. Well, we're definitely going to make you better. Oh, yuck. 
a CT scan is needed so that Andrew can see just how deep Dusty's ear infection is. I'm looking to see what problems we might have in the middle ear, which is a big bony, normally air-filled cavity. But when you've got chronic infection like this, there can be a whole pool of infection sitting in there, and I want to see what's going on. We've got the scan of the skull out, and so that's normal. We go across the other side, and we've got this huge bulbous extension of this middle ear. All of this is infection, and it's slowly expanded this bony cavity, so that it's now about three times the size that it should be. The results are worse than expected, meaning the already risky surgery has just become even more dangerous. Because there's so much infection in there, we're going to be really close to his inner ear, and there's a chance, as careful as we'll be, we'll damage that, and uh, that could affect his balance. Dusty's ear is about as bad as I've ever seen. At SASH, Andrew was performing radical surgery on Dusty's ear. This is awful. We had no alternatives for him. He's been in a lot of pain. His ear is so infected that unless we actually remove it, we'll never get him better. But it's an extremely delicate operation. It's a high stakes game for Dusty. I mean, if we damage his facial nerve, he won't. You know, it's potentially, he'll never be able to blink again. Just starting to fill his skull now at the bottom of my scissors, so we're very close to where this ear canal attaches to, to his eardrum. But this is where it's all a bit scary. Just down right at the base of his ear canal now, so I'm almost about to separate it from his, from his head, and I can just see the infection starting to ooze out. At Sash, Dusty's delicate ear surgery has reached a critical moment. Here it is. That's just a horrible, infected, manky bit of tissue. Dusty's going to be a whole lot better off with that out of there. Andrew has removed Dusty's entire ear canal, cutting dangerously close to delicate tissue. Now we've just got to get out every last skerrick of infection deep in his middle ear. Got to be really careful. Now I'm just digging, literally digging around inside his middle ear. And his whole middle ear is just falling apart as I touch it because it's just so rotten, literally. He's basically, he's got a bone infection as well because of this ear infection. It's pretty bad. He must have had not only an earache, but one hell of a headache for a long time. I think he was on the edge, to be honest. I think if this had gone on for much longer, he would have ended up with a you know, brain infection. It's, there's all this infection sitting right on his inner ear, and his inner ear is just a doorway to his brain. So, I think we got this just in time. Dusty's hearing will be mildly affected, but the question is, long term, how much will the surgery affect his inner ear? As he wakes up, well, he should get a bit of an idea of whether I have upset his balance at all. So I'm really hoping that hasn't happened. Hey, little man. Andrew is anxious to see if there's any nerve or middle ear damage. I just want to check to see if we've done any damage to his facial nerve and see what his balance system is doing. I always you check it as soon as I can when they recover because it's our biggest worry. I can blink. It's a little bit weak compared with the other side. And so I suspect that I've stretched that nerve a little bit. Certainly haven't permanently damaged it. Often if they've damaged their balance system, their eyes just flick sideways like this really constantly and he's not doing that, so that's good. So I mean, that, no, that's really encouraging because I was really worried about that. I, I personally think that Dusty will actually be feeling better. He had a horrible earache, he had a headache, and I think all that pressure is going to be relieved. I, I, I think he's actually sighing a sigh of relief now. Hey Dusty, how you going mate? What are you doing? You're looking alright. Should we get you out and put you on the ground? See if you're not all wobbly. 
Days after Dusty's drastic ear surgery, the moment of truth. Has the operation affected his balance? Cool. How are we doing? One of the big problems with this surgery is when we're deep in there, we can potentially damage sort of his balance center. And they can literally wake up with their head on, a, on an angle like this and even rolling around in their cage. Gee, that looks all right, doesn't it? Hey, how's that balance? Hey, that's pretty good, isn't it? I think I was worried about nothing. With Dusty given the all clear, it's time for him to go home. Come on, come on. In reception, a special visitor has come to welcome Dusty back to the family. So we've brought Mia, Dusty's sister, with us today. She's been very lonely with Adam. She's pretty attached to Dusty and she's been at home crying. So hopefully it'll be a happy reunion when she finally sees him. Hey, Dusty. Who's that? Who's that? Hi, oh, oh, there you go. Yes. Hello. Hello. Oh, Hello. Hello. Oh, I like your mobile. You yeah. like his haircut? I love the haircut. Hey. Hey. Oh, <laughs> oh, wow. So he's got a little bit of swelling yeah. just in there. Yep. But he's yeah. So his ear canal used to be there. Yeah. I know. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. It is I'm touching it. Stop marking that. <laughs> Dusty looks really good, yeah, really happy to see yeah, him. He's good. obviously well, but you know, the ear looks really kind of clean and he's just a different dog. Good result all round. Thank you so much. That is a pleasure. Yeah. Oh, it's, yes, yeah. thanks, Andrew. All right, well, no, Such a relief. Yeah. It's a lovely dog and I'm sure he's, he, he'll be feeling so much yeah. better. Yeah, yeah. yeah. see you later, guys. See you later, bye-bye. See you, Dust. <laughs> when Dusty gets home, his life will be totally different. He's not gonna be in pain anymore. He's not going to smell anymore. Paul and Jeanette don't have to put up with that smell and they don't also have to put up with having to medicate him every day, twice a day. It's going to be so much better for everybody. Number four. You're a good boy. The St Margaret's Clinic is open and a family of blondes are first in the door. Mum Melanie and her children Florence and Oscar. Boy, well done. Their labradoodle Herb has recently developed some worrying symptoms. Herb is shaking his head, rubbing his head in the dirt, and he's generally not been himself. Herb, look, Florence has made you a card. What's it say? Dear Herbie, I hope you get well soon. From Florence, kiss, kiss, kiss. Oh. And Florence and Oscar are worried about you, baby. Herb is absolutely part of the family. We couldn't be without him. If anyone asks us who's in the family, we, uh, we mention Herb first, probably. <laughs> he comes first in everything. Getting lots of hugs. Hello, Undergo. team. How are you Hello. going? Hi, Hi, Herb. You guys Happy. are like looking at my kids, eh? <laughs> like blonde people everywhere, including the dog. Hello, mate. <laughs> Herb's had a few problems over the years, which means that he's a little less keen on visiting the vet practice compared to when he was a puppy. And today is one of those days. <laughs> Come on, Come it's on not going to be too bad. Come on, Come on. <laughs> good lad. Come on then, Come let's on. go. Come on, big guy. Come, Come on. on, it's not going to be too bad. Good boy. Good boy. Good good boy. Well done. Good lad. There we go. There you go. We never want to find anything serious when it comes to a family pet, and that dog is very well loved. So I'm really hoping that we won't find anything too serious today. Good boy, Herb. Good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy, good boy. As soon as I look down the scope, there's something very dangerous and very nasty down there, and uh, I'm quite worried about Herb. Oh dear. Yes, it's Aww. understandably sore, mate, because he has got a nasty grass seed in there. Uh, it's really, really far down the canal. Uh, I must admit, I'm a little concerned about his eardrum based on where it is, because it is so far down his ear that it could be perforating or rupturing his eardrum. Mm, you poor love. Grass seeds are really nasty little things. Basically, they're in the shape of an arrowhead, and every time a dog moves, it'll burrow further and further and further into the dog, and you're unable to pull them backwards because it flares, and it's just such a painful process for them to go through. So to see one in a very delicate position, teetered on the edge of an eardrum of a dog, is serious. It's not a simple ear infection, I'm afraid. So we have to give him something to make him sleepy, and we'll get that pesky ear 
sort it out, and then once he's woken up, we'll give you a call and we'll talk it all through. All right, all right. lovely. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, thank you. Good boy. Take me away. Yes. <laughs> I couldn't ever imagine life without her. He loves his teddy. Don't you? Come on then. Say bye bye. Can I say bye bye to Herb? Yeah. Give him a big hug. That grass seed is lodged right at the base of the canal. It can go right into the middle ear. It can affect his balance. It can affect his nervous system. So there are some very serious ramifications. Hey, so Hello. this is Herb, great name. That's a brilliant name. With Teddy and cards in hand, so we need to make sure they're uh, okay. ready to go. Interesting. Okay. Scott and head vet nurse Emma are about to try to remove a grass seed lodged dangerously deep in Herb's ear canal. He's going down now. Okay, well, I am worried that Herb's eardrum is perforated. It's really bad. It's very, very deeply embedded. I'm almost certain that this is going to have been down through his eardrum. Oh, bless him. That is nasty. Oh, that's huge. Can you think of that trying to burrow into your head? Oh. The grass seed we removed from Herb's ear is a nasty one. Very, very sharp. It's got the feathered edges, so it was only going in one direction, and that's going right through Herb's ear and then into his middle ear. That is exceptionally painful and cause a huge amount of damage. Want to show Mum? I think Herb would have been in a huge amount of pain. Surprising that he's really not showing those clinical signs. He's a very calm, easygoing fellow. But I tell you what, if I had an ear uh, that was full of grass seeds, I'd be screaming my head off. Let's have a little look Let's at his eardrum ear now. Like. Mm. There's a lot of blood and damage down there and infection, but unfortunately I, I can see a bit of a hole. These grass seeds are very damaging to animals and when they burrow into that level, they can cause all sorts of neurological dysfunctions. I think in this case, we've caught it just in time because if it was any longer, it could have been a lot worse. Oh, there's one. There he is. Oh, he was starting to work his way in. Scott and Emma are now searching for any other grass seeds that may be camouflaged in Herb's golden fur. Oh, there's another one. Oh, and here as well. Add it to the pile. Grass seeds aren't as simple as just a prickle in the foot. They can be a real disaster. They actually can harpoon any organ that they find on their way through a dog's body. And they'll only really stop when there's bone. They can cause real problems. They're so sharp and so spiky. Nasty little things, aren't they? We get to nine in total. Poor old Herb, he was focusing on his sore ear, but in fact, all the while, he had feet absolutely riddled with grass seeds. And yeah, no wonder he wasn't himself, oh, old guy. Oh, Braver than I would have been. With all the grass seeds removed, Herb will spend the afternoon sleeping off the sedation. Oh, he's gonna want his teddy to wake up with. Of course he is. I there would. Go, mate. The damage that we've found in Herb's eardrum is significant, but I do hope it'll heal up and eventually he can get back to his water-loving ways. Good lad. <coughs> Later that day at St Margaret's, Joe's dog, Kimber, has taken over reception. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Is this the new receptionist? Yeah. It's a special welcome for Melanie, Florence and Oscar. <laughs> if only. Yeah, shame. She's a rubbish typist. Absolutely rubbish, <laughs> aren't you? They're all anxious to find out just what's happened to their herb. When the kids left here, um, they were really anxious. They suddenly went into complete mode of, oh, we want to be with Herb, we want to be with Herb. Will he be all right? What will they do to him? How's our herb? He's been such a brave boy, but it's uh, a very serious finding that the uh, eardrum on that left side has been perforated, unfortunately. Oh, so he's got a hole in the, the eardrum. So where that grass seed, which is this nasty little thing, look at that, kids, look. Oh my gosh, that's huge. Oh. It's gross, isn't it? Oh. Yeah, I imagined a grass seed to be the size of a pinhead, but it was a lot bigger than I thought, and it was spiky on the end, so nasty. Oh. 
So thankfully it's out. We've flushed his ear canals, okay. but uh, with the hole's a decent size. It might heal, it might not. If we get water down there, that can affect his balance. It can cause infections. Uh, it can even affect his neurological systems. Oh. I don't know how Herb will handle not swimming. He loves swimming in the sea. I mean, he loves the sea. But also what you guys have got to promise me is that you need to start looking between his toes after every walk. Okay. The reason being is that I found not one, not two, but nine grass seeds between his toes. Oh. See all of them? Oh, it's horrible. It was pretty horrifying, really. Now, yeah. guys, just so you know, he's just had an anaesthetic, so he might be a little bit woozy, yeah. look a little bit drunk, okay? Oh, no. <laughs> Spin on the wine. Drunk man! <laughs> <laughs> it doesn't get that from me, by the way. <laughs> I know. It's, not from it's me. very authentic. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> Herb is pretty desperate to get home. We could see he wasn't keen on coming into the practice, but he's very keen to get out. That's it. Oh, Show me the dog. Where's my herb? Give me my animal. Yeah. Hey, baby. Here we go. Who's this? Hello. Whoa. Hello. There we go. Herb's done so well, Brave Might. And I think even though he's a bit wobbly, <laughs> I think that he's going to be much happier at home, snuggling up with Melanie and the kids, and of course, his cute little soft toy. Where are you going to put the grass seeds? Do you want to keep it for show and tell? Yeah. Yeah? I want to keep it for show and tell. Herb's been really lucky, really lucky this time, so I'm glad we got him into the vet and we've got it all sorted in time and hopefully he'll be fine. Yeah. Thanks right, very take much. Take care, no thank worries. You. See you later. You Bye, Forrest Basker. Bye, Herb. And soft toy okay. and card. Lovely. <laughs> Come on then, guys. Off we toddle. This week's number three. In you go. Henry's here to see Dr. K. No worries, take a seat, you won't be long. Cool, thank you. At the Bondi Vet Hospital, Emily and Dave have just arrived with Grudel Hendrix. Oh, he's very sweet, aren't you, Hendrix? But looks can be deceptive because Hendrix has an embarrassing problem. So, Hendrix has had a really itchy, horrible ear for a while now. It's probably been a month, I reckon. Yeah. And it stinks. Hey guys. Hi. Hi, Hi Andy. How Hello. are you? How are you? Are you good? As soon as you fine? walk out into that waiting room, Hendrix is itching his ears. They are so itchy. In we go. Let's get these ears sorted out. Come on, buddy. So he's got bad ears. Yeah, this has been a while as well. I think it's got worse. Okay. So it's this, it's quite smelly for a start, mm -hmm. and then the itching's just got quite intense. And even though like we've been cleaning his ears, so I think it hides the smell a bit. But yeah. he's rolling around, kind of bashing his head on the floor. Yeah. I think it smells like fish, but you think it smells like cheese. Cheese and Vegemite. Oh, buddy, come on, little oh. buddy. Oh. Oh. What is he? Seventeen kilos. Seventeen yeah. kilos. No. So good. good boy. Now, guys, you tell me that he's quite a swimmer. Yes, he loves to swim. Okay. He's got beautiful teeth. That's good. Beautiful long eyelashes. Yeah, I'm, I think <gasps> we might need... <gasps> Holy moly. They're very infected. Are they? Yes. Owners Emily and Dave say the ears smell and Hendrix is constantly scratching them. Oosh. Stinky. <laughs> very, very stinky ears. Oh. It's not very good, is it? You know, these guys described it really well when they said it smells like Vegemite. Mm -hmm. I always encourage people to get used to what normal ears smell like. This is not normal. Mm -hmm. This is not definitely not normal ear smell. Is it handy? It's just a bit of a surprise. It has been smelly a while, so it's good to understand what it could be, but didn't think it was going to be a serious ear infection. We just thought maybe we haven't been putting his ear drops in properly. So all of this here, should be probably not as white as he usually is, but this here shouldn't be this dark. So the reason that the drops are not doing anything is because you probably got like a water-based drop and a cleaner is not gonna fix an infected ear. He's got these really long ears. They never get any air. Water mixed with no air becomes a recipe for ear infection. Oh, handy. Poor little Hendrix. This would be so uncomfortable. And the only thing that I can think of is if you have some kind of intense itch, like an itch at the bottom of your foot, and you had to put it into a shoe and not itch it like the whole day. But that's what it would feel like. It would be so, so itchy. If I do this to Hendy, 
he'll be like, ah, that is so good. Yeah, he loves that. Right, because it's so itchy. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a little sample of these ears and I'm going to have a look at it under a microscope. Yep. And then what we're going to do, we're going to actually put something down there that will work. Okay, great. Okay. We could be dealing with multiple things. We could be dealing with certain types of bacteria. Ooh. We could be dealing with certain types of fungal infections. And what we need to do, we need to establish what this is so I can then decide what I'm going to use to treat this particular ear infection. So we're going to stain these. And this allows us to actually get some colour on whatever's going down in those ears. Yep, the good news is that there's no bacteria down here. But the bad news is, is there's quite a lot of fungus. Kate is getting a close-up look at the culprit deep inside Hendrix's ear that's causing him so much discomfort. Fungal infections, they love moist areas. And so anywhere that's wet, like Handy's ears, is a great place for them to grow. So we need to stop this in its tracks. Oh, Handy. Primarily what we've got is what they call a Malassez ear infection. So it's otherwise known as yeast. Right, so, yes, that's the smell. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take out all of those clumps of fur that are growing down Hendrix's ears. Oh, sweetheart, I know. Be careful, be careful. You're very patient. I know you are. And then we're going to give them a good clean. That ER is already starting to look better and I haven't even done anything yet. I think the most important part of this is getting owners to recognise early when there is a problem. Ooh, that's what's coming out. Rather than letting it get to a point where it's a total mess, having it so that they can actually smell these ears and be like, that is not normal Vegemite ears, let's go to the vet. This is your drops, right? These are antibiotics as well as an antifungal. It's just a gentle resting, so resting like so, right? You don't have to push it all the way down. Yep. And you need to do a really nice, good squeeze oh, down there, good okay? Boy. And then a, yeah, but nice. Are you okay there? <laughs> Shake yourself. Oh. <laughs> We've kind of felt it that he's not been quite himself, so I think it'll be good over the next few days just to see him feeling a bit better. Okay, like a nice head massage. Oh, so good. So good. You said he can't be swimming for 14 days. Well, honestly, I wish he wouldn't swim for two weeks while I'm trying to use the antibiotics and the antifungals down these ears. Come on then. Good boy. Cool. See you guys. Bye, thank you so much. Thank Good you. Good luck. Call me if you need anything. Will do. Bye, thank Handy. You. Don't shake your head. Good boy. Really nice, good squeeze oh, down there. Okay? Good boy. And Kate's patient, Hendrix, is much more yeah. comfortable after treatment for a nasty ear infection. Number two. Ruby here. She brought down because I'm shaking her head. When Ruby first came down, I thought that she would have an ear infection just like all the other patients I see when they're brought down for shaking their head. It's this ear. So it doesn't look as red, it doesn't look so obvious, but down, down in there is some mucky stuff that doesn't smell so good. So what we're gonna do today is first put a little swab down the ear to get a sample of what's down there then have a look to make sure that her eardrum is okay, and then we're gonna look under the microscope and see what we found in our swap. Here we go, have a look down there. Okay. There's a left ear, so a right L. And then the right. What I think I'm going to find is either a mix of bacteria or yeast. And judging by the, the smell of the ear, I think it's going to be yeast. Oh. So we've got the sample from the left ear and it looks okay. And then we've got a sample from the right ear and I'm fairly certain it's going to be an ear infection. Then we do an, an R. Before I go to look under the microscope to confirm that it's an ear infection, first I have to look down into the ear with the otoscope, which helps me to visualize inside, in the ear canal, at the eardrum, and make sure that there's nothing going on there and the eardrum is okay. So 
So I looked down the left ear and the left ear looked okay. I'm exploring Ruby's right ear and the deeper I looked, the more I could make out a certain structure. Actually, it looked like legs. Ugh. There is a spider down that ear. No joke. Are you making that up? No joke. It crawled out of the way. I don't are you, are you making Have that up? Have a look. Up? This is something I've never seen before. I can't imagine how that would feel to have that in there. It's for black legs. Yeah. Yuck. We looked down there and actually just made me feel quite nauseous. So in the canal, we get looked down and we look horizontally and then there's these three little black things which I thought were cobbler's pegs and then they moved backwards. And then I went down, looked further, and it kept on moving backwards. And it's, I, I believe there's a spider or something inside Little Ruby's ear. So what we're gonna do is have a chat to the owner. We probably have to do an anesthetic and then try to pull it out. You can't flush them out because they'll just stay down the bottom and we could actually pull it out. It's all right, Ruby, we'll get rid of that. Good boy. Aww. At first I thought it was probably just like an ear infection or something, but then, what I'm going to probably say is probably going to be a little bit alarming, but when I look down with the with the light and the scope, I believe there's a spider in her ear. The plan has changed dramatically. What was going to be a simple ear infection now has turned into an anaesthetic to get that thing out. 4.2 kilos. Okay, I'll give some pain relief, make you feel better. I know we're going to get it out of there. We're going to get it out of there. Hey. Very brave. Some pain relief, a little sedation, makes it anesthetic easier, and then also makes it more comfortable for her. It's okay, little Ruby, it's okay. We'll get that thing out of there. Nice. Short little anesthetic, you won't feel a thing. So we have Ruby under an anesthetic now, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna use an earpiece with a light. This is the plan. I look down the ear and have the light on and then this is a little grabber down here grab pull out as I was pulling it out I was so concerned that I would pull a leg or two off and then I have to go back down there again That there is actually what I thought was a spider. And you can see how it looks like spider's legs, but it's a big bunch of um, seeds. That is so much better than having a spider down there. Now that I have it out, I can see that it clearly is not a spider, but I can also see why it looked like a spider in the first place. I'm actually quite greatly relieved that that was not a spider because that was really, really creepy to see that. So pulled out one, two, three, four, four seed pods. Um, and there's all this associated with inflammation and things. So what we're gonna have to do is now I'm gonna flush out the ear to get rid of all that gungy bacterial stuff that's been associated with those seed pods. Floaties. Very gently because I don't want to 
ruptured the eardrum. It's looking much cleaner already. Look at the stuff that's come out of Ruby's ear. So what we have here is our spider. Now we know it's not a spider. One, two, three, four, five grass seeds. These grass seeds are little buggers because what happens is they have barbs on them which stop them from actually falling out. They only go one way, which means if they just get near the near the hair, near the ear, they'll slowly over time just work their way down, 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 down because they can only go one way. So five of them in there. If, if we didn't get in there today and pull those out, the amount of inflammation and, and how close it was to the eardrum, I do believe that actually that would have actually penetrated into her eardrum and would have affected her hearing and everything else as well. So good job. Now back to bed for Ruby to wake up. Wake up, Ruby. Wake up, Ruby. Look, wake up. What we have here is the microscope slide with the swabs from the ears. We're going to have a look and see whether or not the right side has any infection there and what kind of infection because we need to give some ear drops to eliminate them. Yeah, so not only we have seeds down the ear, but we've also got a pretty nasty bacterial infection as well. So we can clean that up with some ear drops. So we confirmed that there is a bacterial infection down Ruby's ear. So we need some medications to clear that up, but also it's going to get better a lot quicker now because of the fact that we removed those seeds. The plan is now for Ruby to go home tonight and for the owners to put ear drops in there to clear up that infection. It's time to go home. Are you ready to go home? Are you ready to go home? I bet your ear feels a lot better now, hey? I almost forgot to give Ruby's grandmother seeds, so I had to run out the back and grab them. Yeah, Amy said she took the call when she called and she oh. said that she'd been very uncomfortable. Oh, wow. Oh, they were the sharp ones too. Yeah, the burrs. So they yeah. go only one way, they keep on going deeper and deeper and deeper. Oh, really? If we didn't get those out, they actually would have gone through her eardrum. Oh, really? So, yeah. Oh, wow. Thank you so much. <laughs> no problem. If Amy has any Ruby is well on her way to recovery and we can all sleep better at night now knowing it wasn't a spider. And this week's number one. There's a little lady. Do you want to give Daddy a cuddle? Yeah, man. Scott's next patient is his oldest. 21-year-old Rudy. Hello, darling. How are you? She's actually a bit of a medical marvel, really. She's got the bloods of a, less than a seven-year-old cat, and at the moment, she's kind of like our great-grandmother of the practice, if you will. I mean, she is literally our oldest patient. Not only is Rudy a medical marvel, she's also lived a big life with a very famous family. Jesse is the son of legendary Rolling Stones guitarist Ron Wood. Working at my practice, you do get used to famous faces. So when Jesse Wood walks in the door, he's just a normal, easygoing, really nice guy that just happens to have an exceptionally famous Rolling Stones father. But today, Jesse has to make a tough decision. Rudy has a huge tumour on her ear. It needs to be removed, but a general anaesthetic for this senior citizen could prove fatal. Now, normally, we wouldn't go near a cat of this age to try to do a procedure. Um, it, it's it's nerve-wracking for me as much as it is for you. Yeah. We don't know what that lump is. Right. And of course now it's breaking open, it's becoming infected and it is bothering her. So it's leap of faith time. She's an old lady, she deserves to be comfortable. So uh, we need to be brave and we need to go for it and yeah. just try our best. She's very loving, very chatty, very demanding, a very happy cat. She loves all men, I'd say, especially Scott. 
Right, good luck, miss. Shall I put her back in here? Yeah. yeah. Here we go. Good luck. See you on the other side. She's still purring throughout the she, whole thing. She's been doing this since she walked in the door. Our little resident gremlin. If only our patients were all like this, eh? <laughs> our life would be a lot easier if they were. Surgery is about to start on Rudy. We are going to do a very simple kind of nip and tuck almost, I think, with mm -hmm. this one. A large tumour needs to be removed from her ear. But at 21 years of age, this is a risky procedure. I've been a vet for 17 years, and I think if you don't have some level of apprehension, then you're not doing your job properly. All right, so clock's ticking, so yep. we're, we're OK there, Ems. She's given me the numbers that I would expect of a five-year-old cat at this moment in time, so we're very happy over here. Right. Might not be the most beautiful of surgeries, but it needs to be quick. It's a lot of responsibility, so we take that very seriously. And, you know, she's a, a gorgeous cat who makes our job very easy. So we're going to do our absolute best to get her through this. OK. OK, ready? Yeah. And that's that. Good girl, Rudy. Yeah. It's not very often when my heart's actually racing, just seeing a stitch up. Because <laughs> she does feel like a member of the family and... Uh, you know, there's that extra bit of heart and soul. And she's just so gorgeous. Absolutely, 100%, I think, the ethos, you know, behind us is our love of the animals and dedication to our patients. You know, we don't want to be a factory. Good girl, Rudy. Oh, man, heart in my mouth. Right, and that unfortunate earring is now gone. Record timing. I've heard of speed dating, but that was speed well, surgery. under 15 minutes. <laughs> She's a bit old for speed dating anyway. There's nothing wrong with grannies going out on a date. Girl. Come back to me, come on. But the perfect patient is now taking a long time to regain consciousness. Come on. one of the most stressful anaesthetics of my life. Welcome back. Oh, right. Yes. And breathing. Mini high five. <laughs> Mini high five. <laughs> John, well done. <laughs> Her heart was going. Our hearts were going. Yes. She was breathing. We were not. <laughs> she did it all for us. She's already started purring. <laughs> <laughs> this girl's ridiculous. You are ridiculous. Eh? Superstar. Now I get to call your daddy. How cool is that? Give him the good news. Yeah. So we've done it, my beautiful girl. And who knows how much longer we're going to have with you, but today is not the day. The news about Buppy has affected everyone at the practice. But there is a happier outcome for 21-year-old Rudy. And we both need a stiff drink. Yeah. As night falls, Scott decides the old girl is ready to go home. Afternoon, Hi. how are you? I'm good, how are you doing? Yes, good. Girl's nearly ready. Scott's just getting her ready to go. All Have right. a seat, we'll right, be out with you in a sec. Despite being more than 100 years old in human terms, Rudy beat the odds and has made a remarkable recovery from her risky operation. Yeah, yeah, great, very over the moon. So is my wife and kids, so it's all good. Hello. Oh, hi. <laughs> so here is your beautiful and very brave little girl. Oh, hello, darling. How are you? So, yes, we got away with it. Yeah, that's great news, isn't it? Well done, my darling. You've been very brave. <laughs> Take you home now. Well, she's been through a lot of bad times as well as good times, so I had every faith in her. Scott, thank you very much, dude. Jesse, pleasure. All right, mate, we'll take care. Go. Cheers. See ya. Bye. Hey, Lady Wood. Here we go. Hi, I'm Dr. Danny. If you enjoyed this video, then please remember to subscribe to the Bondi Vet YouTube channel. Click the
click on the screen now to continue watching more great content.